The word exodus is tying everything together this Lent, from the readings, from the prayers. If you remember last week on the last Sunday of Epiphany, we read the Gospel of the Transfiguration. Do you remember that? Where Jesus has taken his James, John, and um, Peter up to the Mount Tabor. And there he's transfigured. And two people appear beside him, Moses and Elijah. And what are they talking to him about? I'm going to make you work. It's Lent. What? I heard it. Yeah, him going to Jerusalem, right? Do you remember Luke's words that Moses and Elijah were talking to him about his departure that he would accomplish in Jerusalem? And I said the word departure that Luke uses there is exodos. The exodus that he would accomplish in Jerusalem. Now remember first century Jewish ears. When you immediately hear the book Exodus, or you hear the word Exodus, what's the main story in Exodus that you're going to go right to? Passover, Passover right? It's the key. Even to this day, if I say to Rabbi Benji, let's talk Exodus, we're going to go right to Passover. Okay? That's the key. So first century Jewish ears, when he would accomplish the Exodus, they're thinking of Passover. You know the story. The Israelites were held in bondage. Physically, they were slaves in Egypt. Spiritually, they were in bondage as well, too. They are among the worship of the many gods of Egypt. God sends the plagues, which literally is knocking off every one of the deities of Egypt that was the false worship and idol worship. Until the last one, where they were commanded to slaughter a lamb at twilight, take the blood of that lamb, mark the lintel of the doors, and the angel of death that night would pass over, that's where you get the word pass over from, pass over their homes, <coughs> and they would be spared. And then they were set free. What happens right after the story? They cross the Red Sea. The Red Sea is the path to freedom. So they cross through the waters of the Red Sea. The waters swell up the Pharaoh's army and all of the Egyptian forces that were charging after them. And then they head out in the wilderness for how many years? Forty. Moses' GPS was broken. Right? For 40 years. And in the wilderness... Were they the perfect disciples in the wilderness? <laughs> no, right? Church hasn't changed much in thousands of years. So as soon as they cross the Red Sea, I mean, the water's still rippling behind them. And as the story says, they immediately start to complain. Right? Oi, Gavalt, you brought us out of Egypt, and here we are in the wilderness. There's nothing to eat, and you're going to kill us. At least we would have had leeks back there. You know the story. So they pray, they get angry. God sends bread down from them. A little bit along in the story, they start to distrust God again, that he would not provide for their thirst. Moses takes his staff and bangs the rock and water comes out. And then they get to Mount Sinai. Moses goes up to Mount Sinai how many days? Forty. Ooh, that number's ringing a bell today, right? And while they're, he's up there, they all get impatient. Forget this. We're going back to the other gods. Anyone got some gold? Let's make a calf. And they begin to worship false idols. Yet again. If you notice, even though they were set free from their bondage in Egypt, the empire still wove thorns in their souls. Remember how I always tell you, fear, scarcity, division are the trademarks of empire that are meant to keep you in bondage as human beings. It's the tinderwood for the fuel of idolatry. Fear, scarcity, and division. And in those three acts, you see fear, scarcity, and division. What in the world does this have to do with today? Remember the gospel we just read. You can cheat and look at it. How does it begin? Jesus is, has had what happened to him? He was baptized. He was baptized. And then it says, what did the Spirit do to him? Drove him. It's a good word. Luke's, the English translation says led. The actual Greek word is thrown. The Spirit throws him. Not involuntarily, but really what it means is the Spirit just compelled him. Jesus charges into the wilderness like a mama bear who's protecting cubs. That's what Luke wants you to see. Jesus is like a general in the army charging at the enemy. 
That's the word that Luke wants. So filled with what happened in the baptismal water that he goes out into the wilderness. And how long is he in the wilderness? Sound familiar to first century Jewish ears? What is Luke trying to paint? Jesus is the new Moses. Jesus is the representative of all of us, the new Israel. Jews and Gentiles, men and women, slave and free, all of us one and now in the body of Christ because of baptism. Jesus' feet wet from baptism reminds us of the Israelites being led out of Egypt through the Red Sea. When you come to the Easter Vigil, notice I said when, not if. When you come to the Easter Vigil, the blessing over this water has all kinds of metaphors from the crossing of the Red Sea. This is the crossing of the Red Sea for us as Christians. We cross from the slavery of sin through the waters of baptism into the promised land of Christ. All right? Jesus goes into the wilderness for 40 days, representative of the 40 years that the Israelites were roaming. Notice the temptations by the evil one. Friends of mine call Satan the guardian angel of empire. The guardian angel of empire. Who almost speaks on behalf of empire. Notice the first thing he says to Jesus. And watch the fear, scarcity, and division. Boy, you got to be hungry. If you are the son of God. Where did he get that title from? If you are the son of God. Where was those words just said in Luke? Baptism. Remember the baptism of Jesus. This is my son. Listen to him. Right? With whom I am well pleased. All of us in this room in our lives will be tempted in some way with our relationship with God. Normally empire will immediately attack us for being a son or daughter of God. Are you really a son or daughter of God? Why would God do that to you if you were his child? You should have a perfect life with no suffering or no pain. Everything should be fine. We even hear it in Martha and Mary, right? Jesus, if you were here, this wouldn't have happened. God, if I really was your child, none of this would have happened. The empire loves to tempt and tease us with the freedom that we have as children of God. So Jesus, if you are this son of God that I heard coming from that voice, you got to be hungry. 40 days. Turn those rocks into bread. Scarcity. You're not going to have any food out here. Scarcity. And how does Jesus answer him? We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. All of these temptations, when Jesus quotes scripture back, he's actually quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. And it comes from a long speech that Moses was actually giving to the Israelites to make them remember their failings in the wilderness and how to overcome them going future. How to undo empire in them. Jesus literally is quoting like the new Moses right to the face of empire. Then he takes him to the temple. Just heave yourself off. Do you really think God's going to protect you? If you really believe in God, he'll protect you. Tempt him. Fear. Lack of trust. And then I love at the very end. He shows him all the kingdoms of the world. I can give you all of this. (laughs) Does he have the power to do that? No, but empire will make you believe it does. Oh, I have total power over you. I can give you your heart's desire. Just have those more cars and buy those more things and buy those more houses and keep filling your bank accounts. I will give you all of this. And then all of a sudden our hearts aren't singularly focused on God. They're divided. Fear, scarcity, and division. But in the wilderness, Christ shows us the path of peace, unity, and abundance. Empire will constantly tempt you in this life, my brothers and sisters, to go back to slavery. It'll constantly tell you how you, if you just buy into my lies, you will really be human, when in fact, you will be less than human. It's only through freedom in Christ that we truly become the people that we are meant to be. One of the cool things that I learned on my trip to the Holy Land that I never knew from reading scripture is where Jesus was baptized in the Jordan and then where he went out to the wilderness, the Mount of Temptation. I was at both of those sites. To get to the baptism to the mountain, he had to go through Jericho, the ancient city of Jericho. 
What happened at Jericho? The walls came tumbling down, right? It's almost a sign as Jesus walked through Jericho. I couldn't go there that day because they had it closed off, the archaeological sites. Uh, but you actually go see the ruins of the broken walls of Jericho. You remember Joshua. He comes to Jericho, which literally is the sign and a city of empire, right? And the Israelites walk around it seven times. And leading the procession were the priests. And on their shoulders was the Ark of the Covenant where God's very presence dwelt. And they carry God literally around that city seven times. And at the last time, they shouted out and the walls fell. It's literally a symbol for us of what Jesus is doing in the wilderness for 40 days. And what he's doing in all of us during Lent. Lent is about breaking free from empire. That is about breaking free from your idols. I can assure you every single person in this room has an idol that you are addicted to. That's our nature. Lent's a time to start to circle it. To draw lines around it. To ask Christ to save us from it and to free us from it so that we can be truly the people he's called us to be. Lent is not about giving up chocolate and beer and biting your fingernails like New Year's resolutions that you'll break by Wednesday. Lent's about entering deeply into this time with Christ in the wilderness and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy, with empire, with death. But you're not in this alone. Christ is the one who's fighting for you. He is driven by the Spirit into the desert. He is going forward with you to fight for your freedom because that's what a loving parent does. He wants you free. He wants you to be fully alive. St. Irenaeus used to say, the glory of God is humanity fully alive. And when you're addicted to empire, you have death in you. Because what you worship, you become. Get rid of the fear and the division and the scarcity. Today we started with the great litany, which was almost like a war cry. We beseech you, hear us, O Lord. Spare us, O Lord. We beseech you. And we're literally showing him our idols. Envy, jealousy, anger, hatred toward neighbors. We're showing him all the chains that we need broken. What are yours today? What is your one idol to work on during Lent this year that you need to be set free from? Focus on that. Get closer to Jesus. Let him drive the spirit in you so that you can experience the freedom of the children of God and be a substantially different Christian than you began it on Ash Wednesday.